Boing. Let's take a look at creating figures using version 2 of the figure editor. Please note that this tutorial was created on an iPad Pro using Animation Pro version 1.8. Your screens may look a little different. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a figure using the tools in the brand new figure editor. Please note that this may not necessarily cover all of the functionality found in the figure editor. Please consult the Creating Figures topic in the Animation Pro Help if you'd like to know more. So let's get started. You can open the figure editor by selecting Create a Figure from the Create Crop menu. The flashing red dot in the middle of the screen is the Figures Hub. This is the point from which items will be added to a figure. The orange dot below it is the Figures Anchor Point. When animating, the anchor point may be dragged to move the figure. It is also the point around which a figure will scale or rotate etc. When creating a figure, you can tap on the anchor point to toggle between move mode and adjust mode. In move mode, dragging the anchor point will move the entire figure. In adjust mode, dragging the anchor point will reposition it with respect to the figure. In Animation Pro, it is possible to add lines, circles, images, mouths or text to a figure. This can be done by pressing one of the buttons in the Add panel. So let's start by adding an image. In this example, I'm going to create a knight using some of the stick motion images packaged with Animation Pro. I'll begin by selecting the image of the knight's upper body. So the knight's body has now been added to the hub. I'll zoom in a little by using two fingers to pinch to zoom. At the bottom of the image is the item's handle, which is currently flashing red to show that it is selected. Just like the anchor point, you can tap on an item's handle to change its mode. In pivot mode, you can drag the handle to pivot the item. If the item has its stretchable attributes set, you can also drag on it to stretch the item. In move mode, the handle may be used to pivot and or enlarge or reduce the size of the item regardless of its attributes. In adjust mode, which is only available for image items, the handle may be dragged to a new position with respect to the image. I'll tap on it again to go back into pivot mode. Now the pivot point at the top of the image also has two modes. When it is in move mode, it can be dragged to move the item around the screen. If I tap on it, the pivot point will toggle into adjust mode, whilst in adjust mode, the pivot point can be moved to set a new point of rotation for the image item. So I'd really like to have the knight bend at its waist, so I'll adjust the pivot point accordingly. Please note that fine adjustments may be made using the dials at the bottom of the screen as shown. Now, in this case, I'd really like the item's handle to also be at the top of the image, so I'll toggle it into adjust mode and drag it to the top. So let's now add the knight's head. When adding new items to a figure, you need to consider which existing item they should be connected to. In this case, I want the head to be connected to the knight's body, so I need to make sure that the body is selected by tapping on its handle. In this case, the body's handle is already flashing, so I don't need to tap on anything. Now I can add the head. The head is much too big for the body, so I'll put the handle into move mode and drag it to adjust the size. Now, with the head's pivot point in move mode, I can drag the head into the correct position. At this point, the head is going to rotate around the pivot point at the top and the handle is going to be at an awkward position at the bottom. So with the handle in adjust mode, I'll drag it to the top, and with the pivot point in adjust mode, I'll drag it to the bottom. Now, if you ever get yourself into the situation where one of these controls is on top of another, making them hard to select, you can use the select dial at the bottom of the screen to choose the correct control. Toggle it into the desired mode by pressing the representation of it here, and perform the necessary movements or adjustments using these dials. 
So now I have a head that pivots at its neck and moves when the body is rotated. So let's now add an arm by repeating the process. With the body selected, I'll add the image for the upper arm. I'll shrink the upper arm, move it into place and adjust the pivot point such that it rotates correctly. With the upper arm selected, I'll add the image for the lower arm. And again, I'll shrink the lower arm, move it into place and adjust the pivot point. Now I have a working arm, properly attached to the body such that it moves with it. Right, now it's time to get completely lazy. I don't wish to do that all over again for the figure's other arm. So I'll select the upper part of the arm, open the clipboard by pressing the clipboard button at the top of the screen, and then copy the branch. Now I can select the figure's body by tapping on its handle. And finally, I can paste the branch from the clipboard. The figure now has two arms, but they are currently right on top of each other. So I'll select the upper arm and move it by dragging its pivot point. Now the lower part of the right arm has the wrong image, so I'll select it and then replace it by using the Replace With Image button at the bottom left of the screen. Finally, I really need to move the figure's right arm behind the figure's body. I can do that by adjusting the Z order of each part of the arm using the Z order dial as shown. Now I have the top half of the figure completed with all items moving correctly with respect to each other. So I'll now give your ears a bit of a break from my voice. It's about time! Whilst I complete the remainder of the figure. Finally, I can save the figure by selecting Save Figure As from the Output menu as shown. Please note 
that if you have already saved the figure, you can overwrite it by selecting Save Figure instead. Overwriting a figure will not impact any existing animations that you may have created using that figure. So that's it. These are the basic steps required to construct a figure. Of course, there is a lot more functionality present in the figure editor. So I encourage you to play around with it and explore the creating figures topic in the Animation Pro help. I hope you found that as informative as I did. Thanks for watching.